what they've, they found is that when a notification goes off on your phone or the little ding goes off on your, your email notification on your computer, um, actually you get a little shot of dopamine. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. We are back today with Philip Telfer. If you missed part one, go back and listen to Monday's episode. We're talking about regaining focus in an age of digital distractions. And if you have a smartphone, you know exactly what we're talking about. If you are a parent who has um, any kind of computer in your pocket or on your desktop or anywhere in your home, you probably are listening to this podcast on your phone because very few people listen to it any other way. Um, you know, you know what we're up against. Um, you know, this is an, a topic that, again, for years and years, people saw the effects that this could have on our our culture, and now we're in the midst of it. Philip, you talked earlier about how when we were growing up, we didn't have all of these distractions. It's so funny to think back to our childhood and getting to talk to our kids about that. We're like, yeah, we had a phone that was connected to the wall and it had a cord on it and there was only one number. And I remember when um, three-way calling became a thing and we could, I could talk to two friends at the same time. And I mean, that was just the most amazing invention ever. It was incredible that I could talk to two friends instead of just one. And, and like you said, I remember when, when cell phones first came out and when email first came out, uh, it was 1994 was the first time I ever heard about email. And my roommate was emailing a friend in Ecuador. And I was like, what is email? What? And then she's like, oh, look, it's really cool. I can send him a message. I type it out on the computer and it goes to him in Ecuador. And I was like, what are you even talking about? And um, it is incredible to see how much the world has changed in the past 26, 27 years. I mean, it's just been a shocking transformation, um, really. When you look back, you know, to the past 6,000 years, and then you look back to the past, you know, the technology advancements in the past, you know, 30 years, it's just absolutely incredible. Um, and I want to go back to something that you kind of brushed um, against on the, the last episode, you talked about some of the problems that we see. And you said, I talk about this all day long. And I actually do want to talk about some of the problems that we encounter as a culture and as families with all of these distractions. And I know you, you um, went into some of the solutions and I want to go back to that. But what are some of the main, and I know we could talk all day long about problems that that we encounter with with these distractions. But can you talk a little bit about some of those problems really that you see and how they're affecting families today? Because it's not just families that it's affecting. It's families, it's our jobs, it's our churches, mm -hmm. it's it's everything that we're surrounded by. So what are some of the things that you're seeing there? Sure. Well, I like to call our the I like to call it the all you can eat media buffet that we're faced with. <laughs> and when you think about an all you can eat buffet, there's always two problems, two main problems with a buffet is uh, how much you're piling on your plate mm -hmm. and then what you're actually putting on your plate. So you look at the quantity as well as the quality. And those are the, the, and I kind of break down a lot of the problems we're facing based on those two things, just how much mm -hmm. is, is too much. And then what is it actually that's going on our, our, our plates and how are we you know, and then the, the kind of the third issue is how does our interaction with technology, with all of its benefits, um, actually uh, become a burden? You know, so Neil Postman uh, in his book, Technopoly, and I don't have the quote in front of me. I kind of have to just kind of do it from from memory. But he says, you know, it's it, we often look at technology just for its its blessings uh, rather than burdens, you know, it's, it's not an either, or it's a, this and that, you know, mm -hmm. so new technologies come with both the advantages as well as the disadvantages. And so some of those disadvantages are, are really clear. So the first thing that, that is easily identifiable today with the quantity of, of digital technology and entertainment media on our plates is uh, the loss of sleep. Mm -hmm. And so when we think about our children, uh, sleep is a gift from God. It's a way for the brain to reset, for the body to rest, uh, to, to a lot of processing happens, you know, that they're finding out while, while you sleep that's important. 
And so sleep is being interrupted in, in multiple ways. One of, the, one of those ways is just we're, we're losing time because young people, as well as adults, are staying up late, um, in, much later into the night, to consume the quantity of media and having less time to actually get to bed and go to sleep. Yeah. The other the other problem that's affecting sleep is the the hyper stimulating nature of a lot of that media. It's one thing if you're watching, um, you know, something that's really slow, uh, or or maybe like an information documentary, or you know, uh, Mister Rogers Neighborhood, or something <laughs> like that. You know, it, it'll probably put you to sleep. But a lot of the entertainment today is very quickly edited. It's mm-hmm. it's very hyper stimulating. It gets the brain going and, and all sorts of uh, chemical processes are happening that, that takes a while to unwind. You know, it's like you just can't turn off the, the TV or the computer and then lay down and go to sleep. Your, your mind is, has been stirred up, so sure. to speak, and it's going to take sure. a while for things to settle. And then the other thing that's happening is blue light, you know. So, you know, blue light is the, it's, you know, we, light is in color temperatures, and so blue light is a color temperature. It's the temperature of daylight. And God has designed our bodies so that when the sun, when we're getting daylight, there's a chemical process happening through our eyes and going into our brains. And I don't like to get into all the d- details. It's boring. I could just describe the basics of it. Sure. You know, that, that, that process is, you know, your body is saying it's daytime. There's sun. I need to be alert. I need to mm-hmm. be awake. And for, for millennia, you know, this is how people function and the sun went down and lamps came on. So, you know, God gave us fire. And so people have been staying up later than the sun sets through lamps. Well, lamps are very warm light, you know, fire is, is very warm. It's a very warm temperature. And it actually has the opposite effect of blue light. It actually mm-hmm. starts making you sleepy. You get, you get drowsy. And so what has changed is a lot of our screens are emitting blue light. And, and, as, and as soon as the sun goes down, we're constantly bombarding. And that's constantly telling our brains that, that we need to stay alert and we need to stay up. And it's changing uh, the behavior patterns that God has wired into us. And that's, that's one of the things. So, you know, I, I tell people that one of the solutions for this is, first of all, your devices need a earlier bedtime. Mm. So put your devices to bed at least an hour before you go to bed. Yeah. And that's important for your children. It's important for you as an adult. And then there are some little tricks that you can do. Like when I, on all of my devices, whether it's my smartphone or my computer, I have, you, you can set, like I'm using a Windows device. Windows 10 has it built in. It's called night mode. Mm-hmm. It cuts blue light. It it's going to change the color temperature of your screen, and then you can set and you should set the the brightness lower at night. As it gets darker, you don't need it to be so bright. Let it be easier on your eyes. Mm-hmm. Even with that, though, you still need to give your eyes and give your mind a break from all that light before sure. you you try to go to sleep. So you do need to put all your devices to bed. Yeah, because you still have that mental stimulation, even if yes. it's not the visual. That's right. And we've all had those, you know, I sometimes have projects and I'm up late working and doing productive things, but, you know, working on a website or something, in, you know, up sure. to midnight and finally you just have to go to bed and you, you <laughs> lay down and it's like you can't go to sleep. Right. And, and it's just, it's, it's the process. So it's that stimulation. So you've got to be able to wind down on the phone. You can do the same thing. You can, you can set your, so I have my screen just set permanently on my phone mm-hmm. to block a lot of the blue light. Some people have been buy glasses. I don't go that far, but some yeah. <laughs> people will buy blue blocker glasses and, uh-huh. and, and wear them around their house. That might be a little weird, but yeah. you know, if you're really serious <laughs> about this, maybe you want to, sure. You know, but warn your kids, hey, it's either the glasses or you right. turn the devices <laughs> off, you know. I think they would probably opt for the glasses, most of them, if they had that option. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Sure, I'll put the glasses on as long as I can still have my phone. Um, but wow. Okay, let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. Are you looking for a fantastic online math program that removes the burden of teaching math? Then Teaching Textbooks is for you. Our family's been using Teaching Textbooks for years and we couldn't be happier. Our girls say that it makes learning math fun, like a game, and they love that it's interactive. 
teaching textbooks uses step-by-step -step video instruction and does all the grading for you. The newest version is available now with an app that even works offline. Sign up for the first 15 lessons for free at teachingtextbooks.com. That's teachingtextbooks.com. We are back with Philip Telfer, and we were talking about some of the problems with having phones. And, uh, and you know, I, I say phones because that's really, that really is the most common thing you know, yes. that, that people deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. We carry them in our pockets. We carry them in our purses. They're in our hands all day long. Um, and so th that's really interesting to think through, you know, the blue light and, and just the stimulation of our brains and, and what that does um, to constantly have those all the time. It's not something I think that we usually think about. Like we think about the addiction of social media and, and, you know, texting and waiting for that phone call, you know, looking at our email all day long and trying to figure out, you know, what, it, and I don't understand really what it is. I've tried to think through this. And I think for myself, as I find myself constantly looking at my phone, it's, it's, I think is that people need to feel needed. Well, I can, and, I, I, do, I can help you on this. Yeah. Yes. Help, let's uh, talk about give this. You, a little, you and your, your listeners, some insight here. Yeah. Uh, I've been very interested. I've read a lot of books over the years on uh, neuroscience, you know, and in regard to media and, and entertainment. And it's to me, it's very intriguing. One of the things that's very clear is, is that there's the pleasure center of your brain, the nucleus accumbens, and it produces dopamine. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are certain things that, that give you dopamine bursts. And so, for example, at a resting state, we'll call it zero. And then you eat a piece of chocolate cake. And if you like chocolate cake, it'll actually increase your and dopamine do. to, to 50%. And, um, and so, and I'm going to use a, an example because it's important. Um, so, you know, so they, in the studies they've shown, so let's just say marital intimacy is, uh, brings up the dopamine levels a hundred percent. And this is, a des God has designed this. So, mm -hmm. uh, but it, whether it's eating a piece of cake or it's marital intimacy, these things are um, regulated uh, on time. And, and whereas there's other things like playing video games, they found that video games uh, spikes the dopamine levels 100% and then continues to maintain those levels. Yeah. And so you can see how damaging this could be because then the body's trying to figure out like what's going on, something's not right, you know, alert, alert, you know, so it's, and this is the same process that happens with drug users is that they're, you know, using chemicals to cause dopamine bursts and uh, then they get the down and they, they feel depressed and they want to get that dopamine back up. Mm -hmm. And so the body's constantly trying to adjust to these new levels. And that's why a drug user has to use more and more. Now, when it comes to things like checking notifications and like what's, what's going on there? Well, what they've, they've found is that when a notification goes off on your phone or the little ding goes off on your, your email notification on your computer. Um, actually you get a little shot of dopamine. Mm. It's like, because there's something you're anticipating right? and you don't know, is it good news? Right. Is it bad news? Maybe you were waiting for good news. Maybe you were anticipating bad news. Maybe you don't know what it is. It could be anything. I right. could have, you know, Maybe, maybe someone in, in, you know, Africa has, has some prince has died and left me $5 million. If I'll <laughs> it happens give, give all my the mother's time. maiden name and my, you know, social, <laughs> social security number. So, um, so yeah, so we have these, but what's happening is we're constantly getting these little dopamine bursts throughout the day and we're mm -hmm. training ourselves. We're, we're like Pavlov's dogs, yeah. you know, or the, we're like lab rats right. that uh, are getting this constant stimulation. And so it, Th this is why, and this is why you um, anticipate it because it's just a little burst of, of dopamine. It's mm -hmm. just not, it's not natural. It's very unnatural. So we, we're going to have to work a little bit harder. Now there are things like drug use. Uh, they say the, the worst thing for, for dopamine, I think it's like crystal meth, you know, spikes at like 1200%. Oh, wow. Um, wow. But when we think of things like video games, spiking dopamine for a hundred percent and sustaining that at very long times. Uh, there, there are, this is, this is where media addiction, uh, does come into play. Now there's what I would call ha bad habits, you know, mm -hmm. habitu habituation. And a lot of us have bad habits, but there are some people who actually become addicted. 
and they they have um, cultivated a certain level of stimulation that they can't walk away with without it um, seeming to throw them into depression or so so that's a that's a huge concern yep. and now the united states has been a little bit uh, the the scientists around here I, I don't always trust the scientists but they they've been hesitant to call an addiction because it's big business sure. you know it's a big, oh, right. entertainment right. media it's a big business so Absolutely. you don't want to just you know, loosely throw out, Hey, there's a problem. But yeah. if you go to countries like, uh, South Korea, which they're, they're technologically maybe a little bit ahead of us as far as media. And, uh, they have such a problem there that they have state sponsored digital detox camps for kids Wow! for internet and video game addiction, wow. because it's become so such a problem. And those are starting to pop up here in the United States hmm. as well. They're not state sponsored. They're various either ministries or just um, other other um, methods of helping, trying to help people get off of these addictions. Thankfully, it's not as bad as getting off of drugs because right. there's a chemical pro there's a chemical that right. you're introducing here. Um, there's an interesting book, and I, I do I will give the. Uh, disclaimer that a lot of the great books on the subject are not written by Christians. Mm. Uh, I'm looking forward. There's, there is a, there is a leading expert right now. Um, but he hasn't, hasn't written a book yet. And, uh, we're, I'm waiting for that, but, we'll, we'll, but in the meantime, like Dr. Victoria Dunkley uh, okay. has a book called resetting your child's brain in four weeks. And, oh. uh, she's, she's, she is working with uh, families and kids and, and with these digital addictions and it takes, and she has a whole program to help a child to get off of these uh, devices, but it's going to take, it's going to be an intense four weeks that takes a lot of planning so that I've watched some of her seminars. I've got her book. It's, it's really interesting stuff. Once again, not necessarily from a Christian worldview. Sure. But uh, I, there are some of these things that we can learn from and say, well, with sure. God's help uh, and with right. that self-control, but our, our children, sometimes we've, we don't like the behaviors that we see, but we're the ones who've opened the doors. You right. know, we've, we've allowed certain things to happen yeah. and then we don't like the fruit of it. So we have to be compassionate. Tremend we, this, this generation of children and teens need a tremendous amount of compassion mm -hmm. and they need even more guidance because, you know, imagine that if we um, had, when we were growing up, a device where you had 24 seven connection to your friends, you right. had access to the world's largest collection of movies, the world's largest collection of music, the world's largest collection of pornography, the world's right. largest collection of video games. And it was all in the palm of your hand. How yeah. would we have done? We, right. we wouldn't have done very well. So, so those are the things that our, our youth are facing, especially the issue of pornography is, is, um, as reading, preparing for a upcoming homeschool conference and looking at the, some current stats from covenant eyes, mm. and they've got a, a little download that you can get on just uh, pornography statistics. And I just felt like sick. I was just mm. heartbroken from reading it. Yeah. Yeah. We've, I've talked about that with my daughter and, you know, just that, that we have in the palms of our hands, access to everything that when you and I were kids, we didn't have access to that stuff, you know, unless you had, you know, a sick uncle or dad or something like that. I mean, it, like we just didn't, we didn't deal with the stress of having that. And mm -hmm. it really is a very different world that our kids are growing up in. Um, you know, you, you mentioned this book by Victoria Dun Dunkley, is that her name? Yes. yes. Um, it, I think that it, going back to what you said before, and that if we're going to train our kids to have self-control with these things, and even if her book is not a, a, a Christian book, I'm assuming that somewhere in the book, she talks about redirecting their attention because it yes. seems like that would be the most obvious thing. You know, for kids, if all of their attention and effort and focus is on this digital media we have to find something else. We can't just say, get off of your phone. Yes. Yeah. And because this is then the question is, well, well yes. what do I do now? You know, yeah. <laughs> this is a principle I've been teaching for years and it's what I call replace versus take away. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're going to, you can't just say no, you have to give your children something better to yeah. do with that time, but something better is going to cost you. Sure. It's going to cost you more time, more money and more energy. And that's why parents tend to default 
to the screen-based entertainment because it's the path of least resistance. It's the proverbial electronic babysitter. You know, they, the, 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 as we talk about child development, uh, the average age that a child begins watching television in the United States is four months old because that's about the time that they can start sitting up on their own Mm -hmm. and you can actually plop a child. As we talked about that reactive attention, you don't have to train a child to watch TV. Right. Uh, that, that that's something that just, they're going to stay glued and, and then they're conditioned. Right. So we, we do have a problem and we need to replace. So, um, I love to offer suggestions, but I, every family has a unique DNA. So yeah. I encourage families to sit down and make a list of things that you would like to do that you would hope to do as a family. Um, and I can give, instead of by means of prescription, I can describe some of the things that I've done as a family. And one of those is I got my, all of my children involved in woodworking. So that's kind of my contribution to homeschooling. Uh I started with my son when he was 11 and I bought a wood turning lathe and we, and, and he and I went out to the shop and we began to learn to turn wood together with the the purpose of also it being entrepreneurial. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't anticipate at the time that my oldest daughter would have an interest and say, Hey, could you teach me also? And then seven years later, we, we had found ourselves uh, every, for six years, we were at a, a farmer's market every Saturday with my kids selling their products that they were making. Wow. And, uh, and I'd be in the shop with them a couple days a week. In fact, I was just in the shop with one of my daughters yesterday oh, wow. as she was working on a project. And, um, and you said, well, that's not an entertainment alternative. It's like, no. And, it's, and it wasn't easy. And it was very costly over the, sure. over the course of the last eight years. We've built a, a dedicated 12 by 24 workshop. It's filled with tools, wow. uh, expensive tools. It's cost me a lot of time as a father, uh, but it's been good. You know, it's sure. like just because it's cost me more time, money, and energy, it's because it was a better investment than just letting my kids um, veg out in front of electronic media. Yeah. Another thing that I we did I did with my son was we built RC airplanes from scratch using Dollar uh-huh. Tree foam board and, oh, and uh, barbecue skewers and some hot nice. glue and there's this great website called Flight Test uh, F L I T E Flight Test dot com great family friendly site okay uh, that teach you and you can download free plans and they have instruction videos and and so we. You know, we, we spent years just learning how to make planes yeah. and fly them together. That's an alternative, you know, but it t- guess what? It costs more time, money, and energy right. than just, and, you know, even playing a board game yep. co- takes more energy. Uh, as a dad, I don't always want to play a board game. Right. I would I'd kind of rather, you know, do take the path of least resistance. Right. So it's about choosing what's better, sure. but you do have to replace that all of that time. Uh, yeah. with something more productive. Yeah. And, you know, you talk about building building planes from Dollar Tree um, uh, resources, and it, it really is being intentional. If we really think through these things and sit down with a notepad and a pen, and like you said, with your family, and write down the things that you want to do, even playing outside. You know, some of, two of my favorite episodes that we've done in the last year um, are, we did one with Ginny Urich about uh, the outdoors and the importance of kids playing outdoors. And we seem to think that we need to always give our kids something to do, but sometimes just pushing them outside and closing the door and saying, go have fun, go create something, go play in the mud is really, really healthy for them. And we did another one on game schooling and the importance of playing games. And you know, that doesn't even always mean that mom and dad have to play a game with them. If you've got siblings, they can play a game with each other. And you know what? Mom and dad are going to have to deal with the conflict that's inevitable and going to come because she cheated and she's not playing the right rules and you know this and that but that's another great way to instill godly character into our kids so we are out of time for this episode we will be back tomorrow we're going to continue talking about these things maybe give some more ideas of what you can do instead of allowing your kids to be on their devices all day long replace versus oh, wait, what did you call it Re- replace versus replace versus take away take away um so we'll we'll jump into that in the next episode as well you guys thank you again for listening you can find out more about philip at philip and we will put those links in the show notes as well thank you so much philip we'll be thank back you. tomorrow see you then